All right, guys, before we start, I have I have the cough, but I don't have, like, the big cough. So if I sound sick, that's because I am. <laughs> yeah, she gave me the sniffles, so <laughs> yeah. we'll be okay. But we were going to do... Um, All guardsman party, party, but, like, we got halfway, not even halfway through, 10 minutes into recording, I was like, I just sound sick. Yeah, so we're going to... So you're that. getting a thread. <laughs> yeah, I like, hope you guys enjoy this one. It is... It... <laughs> I can't even laugh. Again. What's the most unnecessary act of violence in a game by players that you've ever seen? Hard mode. No murder hobos. Playing D&D 3.5 a long time ago. On a low level adventure. PCs were either level 1 or 2 at the time. Forget exactly. Party is hired by town to deal with an infestation of giant bugs. The bugs are native to the region but the level of attacks on the town in both frequency and numbers is new. Shortly afterwards, there's a fairly large attack, which the PCs help fend off. Want to track that last group back to where they came from, see if there's anything special about them. Problem. Nobody in the party can track worth a damn. Solution. They hire a level 1 ranger NPC in the town after asking around for a while, who successfully tracks the prince from the giant bugs. Players immediately jump into the conclusion that he's a DMPC I made up. And to put me in my place, they murder him. What? <laughs> <laughs> he he helped me! He yeah. actually, it's like, oh, okay, the players didn't have anything. Here, I just, yeah, sure. There's yeah, a, fuck, there's the, an NPC the, rogue. The, he can track for yeah, you. Yeah, like, if you don't have anyone, that's <laughs> got somebody, oh my god. Honestly, I, I like the initiative of the players in this one, though. I, feel like I appreciate that initiative. Let's don't let the DM get the better of us. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> actually, that's, that's kind of funny, to be honest with you. That's actually very good. I like that. You know what? Fuck it. You know, why not? In my first year of DMing, we probably went through eight campaigns because of party infighting. One campaign ended with a party member resurrecting the big bad evil guy right after they killed him so the player could get a magic item off him. Honestly, oh, even... don't don't blame him. Oh, no. Don't blame him. Like you know, like, like Gibbs. It's all Gib about the, the shinies. Gibbs the shinies. It's all about the lid. Can't over the lid. Why did we have to wait till he was alive? To, yeah. You know what I mean. Didn't even want the magic item once they got it. It's okay though. With guidance, they've gotten much better. I find the best way to unite the players together is by creating an antagonist they absolutely despise, so their hatred outweighs their desire to dick around with each other. That's actually a really yeah. good way. That's genuinely a really good way to yeah. do it. You know, and that's actually pretty spot on. I don't know. I've never really had that much problems with like PvP for the yeah. most part. I've never came across that many people that are like going out of the way to try and like underhand and undermine other, other players. players. Yeah. But that's actually a really good way. Actually, I, I like that. I like that. There was an in character bet between three of the players on the outcome of an upcoming battle with a dragon. All three of the bets involved the half orc berserker dying. So they wordlessly agreed to work together to ensure he died. First, they manufactured a series of events that would beat the half-orc into attacking another party member, so that they would be justified in tying him up. Then once we reached the dragon's lair, they tossed a twin fireball at it to wake it up, or piss it off. It was asleep, obviously. Slit the half-orc's throat and kicked him towards the dragon, and promptly ran. The dragon, having just woke up, Assume the half-orc was the one who cast the fireballs, and immediately tears him to shreds. However, everyone forgot that the half-orc's racial feature would make him not actually die, including the half-orc's player. So now they had an unconscious but very much alive half-orc, and that means rectifying the problem is hampered by the fact that there is an incredibly pissed-off elder black dragon in the way. But not for the reason you'd think. The rogue bet that the dragon would kill the half-orc. The sorcerer didn't specify how the half-orc would die, and also bet the rogue would die. The cleric didn't specify either, and he bet that the rogue would live. The resulting clusterfuck was glorious. In the end, the survivors were the cleric, rogue, and the bard who wasn't involved in the bet. The cleric won the bet, becoming ten gold pieces richer. Oh my god, damn. The, the face when I was the cleric. <laughs> Big payday boys, <laughs> ten gold pieces. Give, give. Yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about. Ten golds. Character is a burglar on the run from the Nazis in occupied Paris, 1940. A series of circumstances stemming from his paranoia leads him into a part of town he doesn't know about in dark, rainy weather on the first night of curfew. He ends up seeing a German patrol, and instead of reasonably keeping his head down and acting casual or just saying, my house is right around the block, he decides to run. 
Of course they find this suspect, blow whistles, and soon enough he has a small garrison worth of Nazis closing down the block and trying to corner him. They eventually do, in an alleyway, pointing grease guns and car 98s at him and telling him, Get on the floor now! <laughs> Big curve, come on. Instead, he says, Fuck you, Nazi pigs! Pulls his switchblade and slits his throat. This might seem reasonable on some level, but the players were planning a prison break set for the very next day oh, to rescue someone caught in a similar manner. They'd have been able to save them both next session. Instead, he had to make a new character. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've got so many questions on that. It's almost disappointing. I know. But I, you know, I, I would love, genuinely love to play like a Cold Cthulhu game set in like Nazi occupied Paris. Yeah. You know, and I would love the idea of like, you know, you have to collect like, you know, mythical Cthulhu artifacts, like, you know, like Nazi gold and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it would make for such a cool setting. Yeah. And like, you know, of Nazi course. Nazi UFOs and shit. Yeah. And that, and that and also like, you know, I would expect a game like that to have a lot of like cyanide pills, fake oh, yeah. teeth, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, operate, like, you know, uh, agents killing themselves. Yeah. I would imagine that would be a very common thing. However... In this situation, it just doesn't seem to add up. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just was sick of his character. And you know what? I'm just... The players are so this. <laughs> See ya, bye, boys. Anyway, on to the next post. Playing Shadowrun. Hacking a semi-orbital supersonic freight aeroplane and crashing it into the Alps at maximum velocity just to trigger an avalanche. Said avalanche was caused only to create a distraction around the local arcology while the team busted a friend out of a local megacorp black site. Actual deaths were very low, but property damage was immense. Oh, see, that sounds pretty cool, to be honest with you. Based, cause an avalanche that, just to get somebody out. And, like, you know, like, you need to remember, whenever they shot along, they've got all this, like, such, like, high-tech uh, <coughs> equipment all the time. You know, you really do need to pull out all the stops, and, like, mega corps are serious business. They're not, like, you know, you do need to treat them, like, yeah. seriously. Like, you know, they've got all the money, <coughs> everything they want. They can track you down, yeah. and, yeah, you do need to... Like, whenever you're going after them, you really need to do, like, high-end job, yeah. you know? Hey, guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running, and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you, so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so, either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel, and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and, like, let's be serious. The models are pretty based looking, so... Once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. They killed everyone in a monastery and then set the place on fire. Simply because after finishing a minor quest, the monks paid them in food rations and literally had no money on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> One of the players took it personally, and the rest just followed suit and cried mentality. <laughs> I made the mistake of rolling with it, assuming they will realise at certain point how pointless it is. But the idiots went through with murdering everyone within the premise of the building. Then got angry when all they found was more food rations, <laughs> a bunch of religious scriptures, and day-to-day -day utensils. <laughs> oh, I always feel bad for them, but like... Come on, come on, guys. You know what I mean? Murder hobo energy doesn't always get you what you want. No. Even if it is fun sometimes. Fighting goblins. One party member gets on top of goblin watchtower. Goblins are climbing up to attack them. The rogue starts climbing up after the goblins, attacks and kills one. DM asks, how do you kill him? The rogue shoves his rapier up the goblin's asshole and skewers him all the way through. <laughs> party of morally ambiguous pirates. Docking at a seedy pirate hub, walking down the street for quest reasons, burlesque woman flagging down our hero, infatuated he follows her down an alleyway, gets attacked by thugs, combat ensues, it's an easy win. The woman apologises, I'm so sorry they paid me to do it, our beloved hero with a shit eating grin, sorry doesn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky our DM didn't give too much detail other than, well okay, I guess you raped her. <laughs> Okay, okay. That's one way to handle it. Be honest with you, like, you know, look, see when you get backstabbed by someone, you know, depending on the setting, let's be honest, like, you know, are you really going to be that kind to someone? No. You just try to get your, you know what I mean? Nah. Our group's barbarian. Guy is chaotic good with focus on good. 
Not dumb, but naive, and always willing to help without looking deeper into what else might be going on. Lives by the motto of, I love to fight, but fighting without a reason is bad, so I fight for good. (laughs) But when he meets villains who go against his rules of, what's okay, he goes apeshit. First time something grim dark happens. Find a bunch of goblins who kidnapped halfling children to feed them to their god to appease him. God was just some oversized plant monstrosity. Feed me, Seymour! I love we've done that at the same time. (laughs) Feed me, Seymour! Feed me! After the fight, the rest of the group burns the plant monster. Barb finds the goblin mother and their children, rips one mother apart by her mouth, beast, stomps the others to death. All in front of their children, oh, beast. <laughs> Intimidation rule, 19 plus 11. Fuck. You better fucking remember or I'll come back and do the same to you. Towards the goblin kids. Our group's face when a new player thought about doing something murder hobo afterwards. With the barb still in the grip. <laughs> yeah, no. No, 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 avoid it. Let's not. What, <laughs> is, is, it, is, it, is this like the stupid version of like, you know, the lawful stupid paladin? Yeah. Is this like the other way around almost? <laughs> yes, yeah, sounds like. DMing a game years ago in college for some friends. Rolled a random encounter that was just a group of bandits. But I didn't really think it was worth the time. And turned into more of a roleplay scenario. Where the bandits were all obviously ill-equipped with only their swaggering and loudmouth leader having an actual weapon. Me, they're going to end up dead. I know. Like, honest to God. Like, let's be serious. <laughs> These bandits are... No, me, no. These are like the bandits from Oblivion. Your money or your... <laughs> It's like, hold up there, hold up. Half the party were really into doing righteous deeds. One guy is really into just role-playing quirky characters and doesn't hassle others for their actions. Two guys are pretty down for being chaotic and just doing whatever they want, but never devolve into straight murder hobos. The group as a whole are pretty convinced the bandits aren't a threat at all and are just trying to talk down the loudmouth leader who has something to prove. The war cleric... Tired of all his bragging and being threatened with a knife, just bisects him with a single attack. The other bandits run off in terror. The party gets into an argument about how overkill that was and go about the rest of the quest they were on. On the way back, they run into the local constabulary that was investigating the murder of a local folk hero. (laughs) They killed Robin Hood, boys. They killed Robin Hood. Oh, Jesus Christ. The bandit leader turned out to be very popular in the nearby town and his death had shocked the community as they would never believe that he was a bandit. The war cleric, believing his actions were just, outright admits that he was the one who killed the guy. The constabulary are a bit shocked, but not really willing to try and arrest him since it's obvious the party is adventurers that would break them in half. But half the party, the righteous half, basically worked together in PvP to restrain and arrest the cleric. There's a trial for the Tempest Cleric. He thinks the whole thing is a farce. Three of the players in my group are headed for law school after they finish their undergrad, so they get really into prepping for a trial. (laughs) (laughs) One of the only sessions I actually vividly remember. That's quite good. I I actually really like that. That's a nice... You know, that's a, that's a nice one for it, yeah. you know. But, like, you know, let's be honest with you. If bandits come up to you and are start to try and, like, get on like that, you're just going to be like, great boys, fuck off. Party of five. Everyone's chaotic neutral, even though one put chaotic good in his sheet. Heading to a lizard folk village. We know this is their home. Pop estimate is about 50 to 100 from a nice NPC. My character stops us before we enter. We need to agree on rules of engagement. Two members literally say nothing. The other two are hyped for 1488. <laughs> Gas the Skilly's race for Oh my god. Like <laughs> on ironic genocide RP. <laughs> you should have done that was common. Like, come on. My character breaks the implied tie in favour of butchery. We enter the first tent. DM says there is an unarmed sleeping child. Radio silence for like 10 seconds. My character finally has to bail the rest of the party out of the uncomfortable situation they just put themselves in. I stabbed the kid in the chest 37 what? Wait, times! Wait, wait I, th- I thought he was against the what? idea of... Un- I thought he was against this. We end up pulling a bluff involving fire magic to escape the village after taking care of our own business without killing a single other lizard. This was the moment I realised I'm the only one that gives the slightest bit of a fuck about role-playing in a role-playing game. And everything my fellows do is faux edgy as flavour text. 
Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I think well, let's, end it. Let's, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's just end this video here. So I'm going to tell you about the last time I had a situation like this. We'll end on. So me and the boys were, to, were hired to go up a magic shop for a red candle. So we do all good. We clean a big scratch and out the front of the building. Uh. <laughs> I know. Hey. So, as I was saying, we cleaned a big discard tonight the front. Me and a few of the other boys, we go in through the top of the building. We end up going on down. We've got some, there's like some maids or like, you know, shop workers. Now, officially, we don't want to be killing anyone here. This is like, you know, we want to just go in and out, sneaking about, all good. So, um, I jump on down. The clerk comes down with me. The clerk decides to come in with wearing fucking chain mail. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's just a fucking bad and idea. Let me be sneaky. Fucking... Oh, rickle, rickle, rickle. <laughs> so, yeah, we jump down. He ends up with chain mail. The maid turns out and looks at us. I end up loading my... I've got a peg leg rifle, so I do. And uh, the peg leg I loaded with salt. And, uh, you know, I was trying to do non-lethal. I still shot her in the face, so... <laughs> Salt or not, that's it's off. still gonna do some fucking damage. <laughs> it's still gonna, I end up rolling max damage, so I did it on it, and it was just one of those ones. It was like, nah, she gone. No, she, no, she got, she, she like, you know, <laughs> she gone. You no, know, she, she got, like, it doesn't matter if you still shot someone, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, oh shit. So, uh, we like, we did try to emergency, emergency revive her, but, uh, like, it wasn't like we meant to, and no one else was harmed, and I managed to ransack the the front desk of the shop. And Some we... bitch got shot in the face of salt. Well, like, okay. Um... <laughs> I didn't even realise I'm not psyched. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a video down below of the effects of um, a shotgun loaded with rock salt on a human body. Um... Yeah, it doesn't really matter because I shot her in the face, and um, <laughs> it's probably not going to kill most people, but like, if you're critical on it by accident, um, like I didn't mean to, guys. Okay, I'm, like, I, I really didn't mean to kill this poor woman. Don't. She was just it's a long place, long time. Okay, so uh, so you go ahead, you guys tell us what you guys have done, like you know whether or it be what you have witnessed, what you have witnessed, like or, most like lethal death, but like it's not. Have murder you, hobo like have you, stuff that you probably weren't trying to do but it but just it, happened it just kind of happened that way and someone ended up dead by accident you know um, or on purpose or on purpose <laughs> or just something like brittle but yeah. like you know, if you're trying to go all hyper edgeward on it like you know try and try and work with it you know what yeah. I mean? Like anyway, anyway, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Sorry, we've got the big cuff. I think I've got the big. Well, I don't have the big cuff, but I've got <coughs> a bit of a cold, and Megan's got a bit of a cold, and we didn't want to do a big long multi parter. You guys know that is. For you. Yeah, so. you know. Sorry about that, guys. But we will be doing cup bar and little garden party soon. But I don't want to be doing it whenever we don't. Sound whenever well. I'm not well, like yeah. it's just no point. It'll just I want send it- off. If I'm doing our guardsman party or cup bear, I want it to sound good. And I don't sound good yeah. at the, at the and minute. The so. thing is, with those stories, people do go back and re watch them. Yeah. You know so what I, I mean? don't want them to sound one way and then sound different in the next video. Yeah. So sorry about that, guys. But like, we'll see you guys later. Remember, check out the advert, all that other good shit. Links down below. And see what the effects of salt. Salt gulp no, is. No, don't. Why? I thought you meant them go out and try it. Don't no, try no, this. No, 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 no. Don't try it. But check it out, the video. Check out the video. It's actually kind of cool. (laughs) Hope you guys enjoy it. See you later. Bye.